I'm Claire, and this is my mate Anna. 10 years ago, Anna and I drove a Ford Fiesta 10,000 kilometers from the UK to West Africa. We'd bought it off eBay for less than 250 pounds. We had no service history and almost no mechanical know-how. The West Africa we saw is a different one now, and today's politics would make this trip a challenge to repeat. Our breakdowns were outnumbered only by adventures, and we got way more mileage from our car than we'd ever hoped for. 10 years later, this is our story. In our last episode, we were finally making our way to Marrakesh for New Year. Our car was finally capable of blinding a Christmas tree, and we were busy marinating inside our flammable knockoff Adidas as the sun bled through our windshield. We had settled on calling our car the Granny as a tribute to her many aches and pains, since the starter motor was now also acting up. We had 24 hours ahead of us in Marrakesh to finally find some camping gear and jerry cans before heading into the Sahara. At this point, we had nothing to sleep on or cook with, let alone containers for storing the fuel we would need in Mauritania, where unleaded was in short supply. The plan was to get everything done with just enough time left over to find some illicit booze and celebrate New Year. On the upside, the further south we drove, the more our car seemed to be fitting in. Tassels? Tassels, no, 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 I can't say. Though it would take a few wrong turns before we would reach Marrakesh. All right, so we've missed the turn off, but they don't have slip lanes or junctions or anywhere to turn around. So any moment now, you should see a car oh, coming out of the bushes. <laughs> Welcome to our pre-Google Maps reality. <sighs> Off-road driving on a Moroccan highway. Who'd have thought it? Eventually, we reached the bright lights of Marrakesh and got stuck into a New Year's Eve only slightly more social than COVID's finest a decade later. We'd started the evening subjected to bad belly dancing in exchange for the right to buy takeaway booze from hotel bar. We had an early start and didn't even open our vodka, something we'd later regret on the border with Mauritania. Then, just like that, 2011 had arrived. On our way out of Marrakesh for the coast near Essaouira, a crunching noise told us that a taxi had just rear-ended the Volvo. On hearing the crash, the rest of us pulled over in traffic, only to be descended upon by Moroccan soldiers who we'd just made nervous. we just stopped six cars in front of a heavily guarded government building and were looking suspicious as we chatted about the accident over our handheld radios. Just as we were apologizing for our ignorance to the military, the Volvo caught up with its number plate knocked clean off and a now very loud exhaust system. This would set the stage for us to be pulled over a few more times on our way out of town. We're stopping here because Volvo got pulled over by police. <laughs> Probably for not having a license plate. But there's a dude there with a sheep. Yeah, it's pretty oh, chill. All right. Are we going? Vamos, 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 vamos. Vroom, vroom. Oh, there comes Volvo. You hear yep. me? Yep, loud and clear. <laughs> Well, tell me what happened with Volvo. Yeah, someone went into the back of the taxi, which is behind us, so what happened? Our brief time in Marrakesh saw us taking whatever gear we could get for the desert crossing ahead. We had a giant slab of green foam rolled up in our now empty back seat, and this would be our mattress for the trip. The whole of Marrakesh had produced no jerry cans, so we settled for two large plastic water containers that we jammed into the rear foot well. Close enough would have to be good enough. We were now officially out of alternative options. After the Volvo's crash, we'd all realized that accidents were irrelevant, as our cars were completely worthless. This promptly led to us all playing bumper cars on the highway as we looked for ways to pass the time. I want to play bumper cars. Oh, wait, we're gonna wait. Oh, camel, oh, oh, wait. Camel, donkey, camel, and donkey. Bumper car, bumper car, bumper car. Oh, 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 the lack of traffic lights outside of Marrakesh added an extra challenge as far as getting the timing right, and we would miss out on any bumper points this round. So we're in a tiny village, sort of in between. Uh, and Yeah, we're heading towards Agadir tomorrow. Eventually, we left the highway and found ourselves on a much more interesting road, searching for coastline campsites to break up our journey south past Agadir the next day. 
Where are we? Oh. On a random road in Morocco where we have to drive off it to let traffic pass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're looking for the camping. We're on our way. And then we found the coast. Look at that. And then, with a few more bumps in the road and a dip in the ocean, we said goodbye to New Year's Day 2011. Good morning, Claire. Oh, hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> you slacker. So we've been swimming today. We had a really nice camp last night. Yeah. Really good fire, nice really good food. Then woke up, had brekkie, sat on the beach, or overlooking the beach and all the surfers. Yeah, went for a nice swim. I got washed up on shore. I don't know. Got a whole lot of grazing. Wow. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, view's good. Everything's good. We're heading to the beach. We're going past some waterfalls, waterfalls. on the way. In Paradise Valley. Paradise Valley. And then going to another beach. And then camp again. Yeah. And that's how we spent our last few days in Morocco. Swim, camp, and repeat. Only stopping to collect wood for the campfire. Sometimes in somewhat creative ways. So this is the lads trying to get firewood by connecting a tow it's rope up. to a tree and driving forward, except fail on the rope. Rope is broken. Oh, oh. There she blows. <laughs> Would you like to show us your impressive firewood collection there? <laughs> that you brought into the car? <laughs> the crucial, crucial bits of firewood. Oh wait, look. There's some on top of the Volvo. <laughs> and what is that that you have there? <laughs> What's that? I did put loads up on the Jeep. Mm. I've done mine. It's loads like... up on the Jeep. Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's just that was here. Good fire tonight then. All thanks to Anna's twig. Yep. Good. So Yeah, so that's the reason <laughs> why you put the big bits on the Jeep and only bring the little bits in your your car. And yeah, this shit on the window has gone off milk. That was sprayed mm. on our window. Thanks to Tom and Duncan. Nice. The further south we drove towards Tantan, the less time in Morocco we had left. Nice. Now entering the amazing <laughs> village of Tantan. Greeted by some camels. There's nothing here. <laughs> Sand. We're definitely reaching the Sahara. There's a bicycle. Oh, yeah, Cycle as fast and far as you can. <laughs> nice. But there was always time for one more run in with the law. Anna, some advantages of being a woman in today's society. What are they? We get stopped because I failed to stop correctly on a stop sign, which was in Arabic, and uh, I didn't see it because it was the other side of the road. Basically, they're just corrupt son of a bitches, and they want us to pay 700 dirhams. Stopped all the other cars and come way behind us, 700 dirhams for all of them. Did our best French and our best Arabic. <laughs> Managed to get, yeah, 700 for the lot, and then he would let us off because we're women. <laughs> As we hit our first proper sand dunes, we were less than 100 kilometers from the disputed border with Western Sahara, which was widely accepted to be illegally occupied by Morocco. Almost as soon as we crossed the border, the Volvo's exhaust system would fall off, resulting in the first creative bush repairs. And we will see you there next episode. Hi, present day Claire here. New episodes will be uploaded every Sunday, so hit subscribe if you'd like to be notified when it's time to watch. Thanks and see you next time.